Hey, what's up you guys? It's Hilarion Garbozo with you. And today we'll do the Kaggle competition. The name of the uh, competition is Bike Sharing Demand. Uh, forecast use of a city bike share system. First of all, you need to push the like button, press the like button, subscribe to my videos and comment my videos. I really need your feedback, guys. Okay, let's talk about the Kaggle competition. Today we'll do a playground prediction competition, bike sharing demand, uh, forecast use of a city bike share system. So let's overview the competition. Uh, bike uh, sharing systems are a means of renting bicycles where the process of obtaining membership, rental and bike return is automated. We are a network of kiosk locations throughout the city. Using uh, these systems, people are able to rent a bike from uh, one location and return uh, it to a different place on an uh, as uh, needed basis. Currently, there are over 500 bike sharing programs around the world. The data generated by these systems makes them attractive for researchers because the duration of travel Departure, uh, departure location, arrival location and time elapsed is uh, explicitly uh, recorded. Bike sharing systems therefore function as a sensor network which can be used for studying a mobility in a city. In this uh, competition uh, participants are asked to combine uh, historical usage patterns with uh, weather data in order to forecast bike rental demand in uh, the capital bike share program uh, in Washington DC. Uh, so the Kaggle is hosting this competition for the machine learning community and we need to have the acknowledgement of uh, the authors of the data. So uh, let's dive in uh, to the data a little. Uh, you are provided early rental data spanning two years. Uh, for this competition, the training set is uh, comprised uh, of the first 19 days of each month, while the test set is the uh, 20s to the end of the month. You must predict the total count of bikes rented during each hour covered uh, by the test set using only information uh, available prior to the rental period. So here is our data fields, uh, date time, uh, season, holiday, uh, working day, uh, weather, uh, temp, it's a uh, temperature in Celsius, a temp, uh, feels like temperature in Celsius for people, humidity, uh, wind speed, casual, number of uh, non-registered user rentals, initiated, registered, number of registered users, uh, rentals uh, initiated and count. Uh, it's casual plus registered number of total rentals. They've got a uh, Kaggle competition API, so you can download the data with the Kaggle uh, API. And uh, here is the uh, sample uh, submission and the test, uh, test set, we've got test set. So season, holiday, uh, the distribution of this, uh, arrivals, walking day, weather, temp, uh, a temp, humidity and wind speed. Uh, so so the same for the train uh, data set. Let's now dive in uh, the kernel. I found this kernel with Vivek Srinivasan. Uh, uh, it's a data science enthusiast, just like you guys, uh, at Visual BI Solutions, uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu, uh, India. So thank you, Vivek. The name of the kernel is EDA uh, and Ensemble Model, uh, top 10 percentile. Uh, this notebook explains how we can go about exploring and prepare data for a model building. Uh, the notebook is structured in the following way. So first of all, uh, we will talk about data set, data summary, feature engineering, uh, missing value analysis, outlier analysis, correlation analysis. Uh, visualizing distribution of data, uh, visualizing count versus uh, other uh, variables, filling zeros in wind speed using uh, random forest algorithm, 
and three different uh, models uh, for predicting, uh, like uh, linear regression uh, model, uh, regularization models, and ensemble models. First of all, about dataset, uh, but uh, we almost told about it, so I'll skip it. And as usual, we're importing uh, libraries, PyLab, uh, Calendar, NumPy for linear algebra, Pandas, Seaburn uh, for plotting, uh, SkyPy, uh, Missing Now, uh, Daytime, Matplotlib, and Burnings, uh, and Matplotlib in line. So uh, we are reading a data set with pandas, uh, pd.readcsv, train csv. Uh, and as a first step, let's do three simple steps on the data set. Uh, let's explore the size of the data set, uh, get a glimpse of uh, data by printing few rows. So we'll take the head. Uh, what type of variables contribute our data? So the uh, shape of the data set is 10,886 and uh, 12 uh, columns. And the sample of first few rows uh, as, uh, had two. So here is our data set. So we've got daytime and uh, all other variables. So the variables uh, data type, uh, data type as object and other as integer. integer. Uh, 64 and float 64. Let's now do the feature engineering. As we see from the above results, the columns season, holiday, working day, and weather should be of categorical data type, but the current data type is integer for these columns. So let us transform the data set in the following ways so uh, that we can get started up with our EDA. Create new columns, uh, date, hour, weekday, month from daytime column. Uh, then uh, change the uh, category and drop the daytime column as we already extracted useful features from it. So we're taking, uh, taking uh, a date, uh, our weekday, and uh, we are creating new columns from uh, daytime column, applying lambda function and mapping. Uh, dropping uh, after that uh, the uh, daytime and let's start with very simple visualization of variables uh, data type count with a bar plot seaborn so here we go uh, let's do the missing values analysis once we get hang uh, of the data and columns next step we generally is to find out whether we have any missing values in our data luckily we don't have any missing value in the data set as uh, you can see in skins uh, in distribution one way which uh, i generally prefer to visualize missing value in the data set is through uh, missing now it's a quite handy library to quickly uh, visualize variables for missing values uh, as i mentioned earlier we got lucky this time as there are no missing value in the data set so uh, you can see the skewness in uh, distribution with uh, this library uh, missing uh, no uh, metrics daily data it's uh, our data set and you can see that we've got no missing data so outliers analysis as first uh, look uh, count variable uh, contains a lot of outlier data points which skews the distribution towards right as uh, there are more data points beyond uh, outer uh, uh, quartile limit but in addition to that following inferences can also be uh, made for the simple box plots given below Spring se uh, season has got relatively a low count. The deep in mid in uh, value in box plot gives evidence for it. The box plot with hour of the day is quite interesting. The median value are relatively higher at uh, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and uh, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. It can be uh, attributed to regular school and office uh, users at that time. Most of the outlier points are mainly contributed from a uh, working day than uh, non-working day. It is quite uh, visible uh, from figure 4. So uh, we would uh, use the box plot. And uh, you can see the outliers in the box plot. So uh, here is uh, the box plot count. 
Bug Splat on counter cross season, uh, different seasons, fall, uh, spring, summer, winter. Bug Splat on counter cross hour of the day, you can see. And the Bug Splat count across walking day. Let's remove outliers in their count column uh, so we can uh, drop it uh, with this line of code and uh, print the shape uh, of uh, they said before the outliers and a shape of uh, the uh, after outliers. You can see the decrease. Correlation analysis. One common to understand how a dependent variable is influenced by features, numerical, is to uh, do a correlation uh, matrix between them. Let's plot a correlation plot between count and uh, temp, temp, humidity, wind speed. Temp and humidity features has got positive and negative correlation with count uh, respectively. Also, the correlation between them are not very prominent still uh, the count variable has got little dependency on temp and humidity. Wind speed is not gonna be really useful numerical feature and it is uh, visible from its correlation value with count. A temp is variable is not taken into since uh, ATM and temp has got strong correlation with each other. During uh, model building uh, any one of the variable has to be dropped since they will exhibit uh, multi connularity in the data. Uh, casual and registered are also not taken into account since they are uh, leakage variables in nature and need to drop during uh, model building. Regression plot in Seaburn is one useful way to depict uh, the relationship between two features. Here we can see the count versus temp, humidity and wind speed. So here is the correlation matrix uh, of our data set. Uh, we do it with dot core and uh, so you see different colors and uh, different uh, correlation coefficients. Uh, visualizing distribution of data, is it uh, visible from the below figures that count variables is skewed towards right? It is desirable to have normal distribution as most of the machine learning techniques require dependent variable to be normal. One possible solution is to take log transformation on count variable after moving outlier data points. After the transformation, the data looks a lot better, but still not ideally for a normal distribution. Uh, so uh, you can see it over here. Uh, and after the transformation. Uh, uh, visualizing count versus months, uh, season, hour, weekday, uh, and user type. It's quite obvious that people tend to rent bike during summer season since it's really conducted to ride bike at that season. Therefore, June, July and August has got relatively high demand for bicycle. On weekdays, more people tend to rent bicycle around uh, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. and 5 p.m., 6 p.m. As we mentioned earlier, this can be attributed to regular school and office com uh, committees. Above uh, pattern is not observed on Saturday and Sunday. More people tend to rent bicycle between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. The peak user count around 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. 6 p.m. is purely contributed by registered user. So here is all the code with the subplots and plots, uh, and uh, you can see these plots over here. It's uh, not that uh, complex code. I would leave uh, the a link uh, to this kernel. Uh, and you can see it by your own. So the average count by months, uh, average users count by hour of the day uh, across season, average users count by hour of the day across weekdays, uh, average users count by hour of the day across user type. So we have visualized the data to a uh, great extent. So let's go and build some models and see how close we can predict the results. And we need to fill zeros in wind speed using a uh, random forest. Uh, so we do it. We will do it using random forest. So uh, let's read in uh, train and test data. Uh, combine uh, train and test uh, data with append. Uh, feature engineer, as we've uh, done this before. Uh, and build the random forest model to predict uh, zeros in wind speed. So
so we are uh, taking random forest regressor from uh, from Escalon ensemble. Uh, so our model uh, is a random forest regressor. So we are take, uh, taking uh, in uh, the um, features. Uh, and uh, predicting uh, series. And right after filling the missing values, uh, zero values in mind speed, uh, we are ready uh, for modeling. Uh, so we've got categorical feature names, numerical feature names, drop features, we are dropping features, uh, splitting train and test data. Uh, and dropping unnecessary variables and uh, make uh, define the scorer RMS LEA. So here's a uh, scorer uh, that we defined. Uh, and our first model would be a linear regression. So from Escalon linear model, we importing uh, three type of models: linear regression, rich, and lasso. Uh, we would do the model sele uh, selection by grid search uh, and uh, we're inputting from Escalon matrix. So initializing logistic regression model, uh, linear regression, uh, training uh, the model. Uh, but uh, first of all, we need to uh, make the uh, logistic uh, transformation uh, of our label then feeding our linear regression uh, and uh, making prediction and on this prediction we can make uh, we can calculate MSLE value for linear regression so here it is uh, we've got 0 0.96 97 sorry the next realization model uh, would be rich a rich reg uh, regressor uh, where uh, we would uh, grid uh, search our best model, mm, make the logistic transformation for the labels, feeding our uh, rich classifier, make the prediction and uh, calculate uh, our RMSLE for uh, rich regression. So here it is uh, with different alpha uh, and uh, plot uh, the uh, result with different alphas. So our RMSLE value for rich regression would be again uh, 0.97. And uh, here, uh, here is our uh, mean uh, with different alphas. Regularization model lasso, or, uh, lasso regressor. Uh, I need to do you know what I need to shoot uh, the video about linear regressions like lasso and rich and what is the difference. I'll do it next time, but right now for those who know what is the difference, uh, we are doing. We would uh, calculate uh, lasso regression uh, and RMSLE for it. Uh, for different alphas and uh, lasso parameters. Uh, just the same would uh, pick uh, the best model with uh, grid search cross-validation. And uh, for this, uh, the result would be again, but a little, uh, it would be again a 97. And uh, here is how the I mean uh, MSLE for different alphas look like. So it's for the last regression and it's for the rich uh, regression. Let's now take ensemble models, uh, random forest, and we would take it from the ensemble, uh, ensemble random forest regressor for 100 estimators. Uh, do the uh, logistic transformation of the labels, uh, feed the model, and here we go. Our MSLE value for random forest is 0.1. Uh, 
gradient boosting. Uh, you know, I've got video what is the difference between random forest and uh, gradient boosting. Uh, uh, I got the video on my channel. You can check it. It's one of the most popular videos. And uh, we will take gradient boosting regressor from Escalon Ensemble with uh, 4000 estimators and uh, 0 0.01 uh, alpha. Make uh, the transformation, a logistic uh, log transformation uh, for the labels and uh, feed our um, regressor with the data with the train data and here we go our MSLE value for gradient boosting is 0 0.18 uh, let's compare the distribution of train and test results more or less the distribution of train and test uh, looks identical it confirms visually that our model has not predicted really bad and not suffering from major overfitting problem so here is the distribution and uh, from this point, we are ready uh, to submitting, uh, and the submission will have a test score of 0 0.41. So it was really nice uh, to talk with you guys, and this was a bicycle competition on Kaggle.com. So thank you, and see you tomorrow.